All right, just want to take a couple minutes here quick to uh, expose this heretic here, this Jesse, I'll call him more in hell. He's more in hell than most people. He is a rejecter of Jesus Christ, rejects the righteousness of Jesus Christ, and trusts in his own self-righteousness. I've seen some of his stuff when I was doing my research on the whole straight papist movement. He believes that he is sinlessly perfect. He is teaching work salvation. He said, oh, no, it's faith, faith in Jesus. Okay, then you got to continue in holiness and obeying Jesus and, and living sinlessly perfect. If that's the case, then you're not trusting in the righteousness of Jesus Christ. You're trusting in your own self-righteousness because if you fall into sin, then you lose your salvation. You see, then that means that you are working for your own salvation. Absolutely, as it does. So let's just watch a video here real quick of this lying false prophet. Well, you have, especially in America, this, this phrase, they, they, they quote it like it's a scripture. It's not, oh, I'm just a sinner saved by grace. Okay, it's it's not in scripture and things, uh, you know, not in scripture. Okay, um, let me just show you here real quickly. And of course, he's not a Bible believing Christian, um, not on your life. Um, let me see here. I'm trying to think. A good one would be Mark chapter two. See, and another thing you got to watch out with these street papists, these street preachers. Um, they will just quote scripture. The Bible says, 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 and they'll quote it so quickly, and you can't, they're not actually telling you to turn in the scriptures. You say, well, they have to out on the street. Okay, he's not out on the street right now. These guys will do this. I've seen this thing for a long time now. I've been aware of this movement, but I just really haven't come out much against it. But they're very, very wicked. Um, Mark chapter 2, verse 17 says here, when Jesus heard it, he saith unto them, they that are whole have no need of the physician, but they that are sick. I came not to call the right, righteous, but sinners to repentance. So a sinner that's saved by grace. I'm just a sinner saved by grace. Well, you got to be a sinner to be saved. All right. And uh, what about being saved by grace? Obviously, Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9, perfect place to go to. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Grace through faith, right? Not of works. It's not of yourselves. Like Jesse Moore in hell teaches. All right? And uh, play a little bit more here. Really? I'm just a sinner saved by grace. No, you're just a sinner. You're just a sinner. Because if you were saved by grace, you would become a saint. It's not about... A sinless saint. Okay, they're a papist. Catholic here. Being a sinner saved by grace, you become a saint empowered by grace. You become a saint who's governed by grace. <laughs> empowered and governed by grace. Ooh. <laughs> Chapter and verse on that, please. Let's continue. What is grace? A license to sin? God forbid! What is grace? An instructor in righteousness. The Bible says the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared unto all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live righteously and soberly and godly in this present world. No, no, no. A sinner saved by grace would become a saint who's ruled by grace. Oh, I'm just a sinner saved by grace. That's not a testimony. That's not a salvation testimony. Where's the deliverance? Where's the salvation? See, where's the deliverance? Where's the salvation? He's talking about what you do. See, you're not saved because you're a sinner. You're saved from your sins so that you can be now self-righteous. You can be an imitation, an imitator of Jesus Christ. Another Christ. Hmm, which is exactly what Jesus Christ warned about. How about that? Let's continue. That's not grace. That's a disgrace. That's what that is. Dun, 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 dun. You know, just funny. Uh, trying to think of another verse of scripture here. First Timothy chapter one. Whoops, I hit Second Timothy. Rendering video and things right now, so my computer is a little bit slow. But First Timothy chapter one, verse fifteen. 
This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief, Paul says. Paul is the chief of sinners. He doesn't say, of whom I was chief. You realize the corruption that is in your flesh when you get saved. You realize that struggle with sin that you have. Unless you're a self-righteous Pharisee, like that little jerk right there. I'll show you another one here. Rebuking the Gnostic heresy of a sinful body. Okay, before we even go there, let me just show you here. Because he, he wouldn't quote these verses of scripture to save his life. You know, saying that there's nothing wrong with your flesh. Nothing wrong with it. Okay. Um, <clears throat> for I know that, verse Romans chapter 7, verse 18, For I know that in me that is in my flesh dwelleth no good thing. For the will is present with me, but how to perform that which is good I find not. For the good I would, I do not, but the evil which I would not, that I do. Now if I do that I would not, it is no more I that do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. Right? He's saying, in other words, his soul is redeemed, but his flesh is still corruptible. I find then a law that when I would do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. But I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind, and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members. Okay? He's saying his sinful flesh. O wretched, o wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? You say, well, see, this is talking about, Paul is saying here about before he got saved. Um, okay, then read verse 25. I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. He's the one that's going to deliver him from the body of his death. So then with the mind I myself serve the law of God. You can't do that as a lost person. But look at this. But with the flesh, the law of sin. He still struggles with sin. And there's a war there between the two. I'll show you another verse of scripture. Galatians chapter 5. Going down here to verse 16. This I say then, walk in the spirit, and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusted against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if ye be led of the spirit, ye are not under the law. Now he gets into the works of the flesh here. As I, you know, lists all these different things here. You can go over that. It says, As I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. All right? Um, he's talking to Christians there. Kingdom of God is spiritual fellowship, according to Romans chapter 14, verse 17. I'll show you the verse here real quick. Romans chapter 14, verse 17. It's... For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. So you get out of fellowship with the Lord if you start to give into the flesh and you start to do sin as a Christian. Hmm. First Corinthians, and there's a whole lot more I could say on this, the, the subject of eternal security for a Christian. It's not a license to sin. All right. Uh, it's understanding that God saved you. You don't save yourself. Like Jesse Moore in hell teaches. Um, going out and doing a lot of damage to the body of Christ through his wicked nonsense. Uh, no, not chapter 15. I'm thinking of another verse here. 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Um, talking about, you know, basically communion. And uh, you're doing it in remembrance of Jesus Christ, not as a perpetual sacrifice to keep yourself saved like the Catholics have to do. But it says here, verse 28, But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. In other words, if you're not understanding, you're not remembering that Jesus, what he had to go through to, to pay for your sins, you're going to get damnation. Not in the sense that you're losing your salvation, you're going to see that here in a minute, but in the sense that your life is going to turn into a really bad time if you're messing around with the you know, flesh. So how do you know? For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. It's talking about saved people. Among you. Saved people. And many sleep. God will actually kill a Christian if they get too far away from him, too far out of fellowship, and mess around in sin. All sin is negative. You're not going to lose your salvation, but you can lose your health, you can lose your testimony, you can lose your joy, you can lose rewards at the judgment seat of Christ, and you can eventually lose your life if you don't 
you know, turn from that stuff. Look at this, verse 31, for if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, save people, we are chastened of the Lord that we should not be condemned with the world. Hmm. Show you another one here real quick, Second Timothy chapter 2. Um, okay, verse 12. If we suffer, we shall also reign with him. If we deny him, he also will deny us. You say, well, they're seeing, they lost their salvation. Keep reading. If we believe not, yet he abideth faithful, he cannot deny himself. Are you a member of the body of Christ? Then how can he deny himself? You see? And there's scripture after scripture after scripture. You're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise until the day of redemption. Ephesians chapter 1, Ephesians chapter 4, both talk about it. But work salvation, heretic like this, uh, isn't going to get that. So I showed you the scriptures that talk about the body and flesh being sinful. Let's watch this here real quick. You'll see what I mean. Work salvation. Oh, you're going to sin un until you die. Death becomes your savior. You know what that is? I'll tell you what it is. It's called a Gnostic heresy. Death becomes your savior. Um, that is, you know, what the Bible teaches. Okay? Um, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? We already saw that. You get to go to be with the Lord. And then you're not going to sin anymore. You're not going to have those problems anymore. Again, what a self-righteous little jerk. Oh, he doesn't sin. I can take you all through his videos. He's changing scripture. There's pride. There's strife. There's contention. All lusts of the flesh, by the way, I might add. But he's sinless. He's perfect and sinless. An imitation Christ. Right. Let's continue. Gnostic said, this flesh, this body is sinful. So they deny... Well, then I guess Paul was a Gnostic. <sighs> what an idiot. I, that Jesus came in the flesh. First John called them Antichrist. The spirit of Antichrist, First John said, is in the world. Who deny that Jesus came in the flesh. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Did you hear him? Who deny that Jesus came in the flesh. Uh-oh. Hey, Sonny. You just failed. He just failed the test. Um, sorry, I just got done doing a whole bunch of videos. My brain's a little bit frazzled right now. Um, is it chapter? Yeah, four. Excuse me. Um, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God. There's one that isn't right there. Um, because many false prophets are gone out into the world. Again, hereby know ye the Spirit of God, every spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Present tense. You get that? Is of God. And every spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is it in the world. You see, I serve a risen Savior. Not one that has come in the past. He is come. That's the test for Antichrist. If you confess that Jesus Christ is come, this liar just said has come. Play it again. Antichrist. The spirit of Antichrist, First John said, is in the world, who deny that Jesus came in the flesh. Ooh, see it? Jesus came in the flesh. It says is come, not came. Those were the Gnostics, a counterfeit Christianity, who said you cannot be free from sin until you die, until you get a new body. Look, this body doesn't make you sin. Then I guess Paul was a liar. Interesting. Paul said you, you're, you can yield your members as instruments of righteousness just as you used to yield your members as instruments of sin. This body's just a tool. You could use a hammer to hit a nail, or you could use a hammer to kill your neighbor. 
The hammer is not righteous or sinful. It's how you use it. Your body is not righteous or sinful. It's how you use it. Oh, really? Really? By the way, this is the same liar that says that there is no original sin, that you're not born in sin and whatever else. He's a Satanist. He's on Jesus' level, you see. He's got his own righteousness. He's a saint. The Bible says you present your body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. My body is holy because I use it for holy purposes. <laughs> My body is sanctified. It's not glorified. Glorification is physical perfection. Well, you're no longer subject to death. Sanctification is moral. Okay, uh, Princess, why are you, why are you uh, subject to death? If you're holy and pure and perfect, the Bible says the wages of sin is death. Well, if you don't sin, then uh, you aren't earning any wages that would cause you to die. Kind of weird, isn't it? Let's continue. Perfection. Well, you're not using it for sin. My body is not glorified, but it's sanctified. So your body didn't... How, and how is it sanctified? By your own works. And notice, he's not saying to the people, turn in your Bible to here, turn in your Bible to there. He's not showing the scriptures. Mark of a false prophet. I'm going to show you another one here where he actually changes the scripture on a college campus. Let's continue. Make you sin. You don't need a new body to be free from sin. Here's the truth. Your body didn't make you sin. You made your body sin. Your body's the victim, not you. I made my body drink alcohol. I made my body do drugs. I made my body do immoral things. Okay, what is the I there? Your soul, your spirit? Weird. Totally weird. My poor body was created for the service of God, and I'm using it for the service of sin. My body didn't make me sin. I made my body sin. So you got this misplaced hope. Think of how many people have died thinking, well, I can't stop sinning till I die. Can't stop sinning till I die. Can't stop sinning till I die. They never repent, never surrender. They die in sin thinking, well, I'm just going to go get a new body and then I won't sin anymore. And they wake up in hell. Uh, what about faith in Jesus? What about salvation through Jesus Christ? It's all works. It's all works. So they had a false hope in a false savior, trusting in death rather than trusting in God. Because had they trusted in God, they would have overcome. Oh, had they trusted in God, they would have overcome. Uh, overcome what? Sin? Then why did Jesus die on the cross? Oh, jerk. It ticks me off. Think of how many people have been damned by this. So you can't have your false hope. Don't put off your sanctification until you die. It'll be too late. Sanctification is for this life. Sanctify your body in this life. Paul contradicted the Gnostics when he said, May the God of peace sanctify you wholly, spirit, soul, and body. The Gnostics... Uh-oh. Let's look at that verse real quick here. First Thessalonians chapter 5. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly, and I pray God your whole spirit and soul and body be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he that calleth you, and who also will do it. Do what? Sanctify you? You mean it's Jesus that does it, and not you yourself? Nothing like that. That would be Gnosticism or something. What an idiot. Sorry, isn't it? Idiot. Six at all, you can be sanctified in spirit, but not sanctified in body. You can be pure in spirit, but not pure in body. And they're like, well, you can do all these things with your body, fornicate, and it doesn't matter because you're pure in your spirit. All people that reject eternal security, they always do this. They always say, well, I guess I can go out and do all these things. I can go kill people and cut people's heads off and, you know, fornicate and rape children and whatever else. I guess I can do that. It's funny that they would bring that up. It's almost like there's a thing in them that they'd like to actually do that stuff. 
kind of weird. I've seen that thing. I've talked to a lot of these types of people and things, and that, that's that's what they do. Oh, you believe in eternal security? Well, then I guess I can just go kill people. You know? Okay. <laughs> it's the same heresy you find in churches today of a sinful body, sin until you die, righteous in your position but not in your practice. It's the counterfeit Christianity of Gnosticism that's been around since the beginning. You have preachers who seem, they seem to fear holiness but not sin. Oh, you'll sin every day of your life, that's fine. You claim to be holy? How dare you? How dare you claim to live holy? How dare you? How dare you work your way to heaven? You lying false prophet. How dare you reject Jesus Christ and his righteousness? Did you hear me? His righteousness. No, you're working your way to heaven. And at any time you could fail and lose your salvation. That's what he believes. That's what all, a lot of these street papists believe. They believe that it is up to them to make it to heaven. That's why they go out and they say to the lost people, you have to stop sinning, repent, stop your sin. You see, why? So that those people can save themselves. It isn't, hey, your sin is messing you up and it's get, got you in trouble with the Lord. And you're going to be judged for those sins and you need to come to the Lord in, re, in a repentant state. In other words, repenting of your self-righteousness, repenting of thinking that you're a good person. Oh, no, no. You need to repent of your sin and turn to self-righteousness. That's what these people teach. It's like they fear holiness and have no fear of sin. It's backwards. They defend sin and attack holiness when they ought to attack sin and defend holiness. can't imagine having a ministry that just attacks obedience and righteous living and holy living promotes daily sinning. And it's funny too because they have different definitions of sin. They'll do this. They'll, just like the Catholics, venial and mortal sin. These guys will come out and they'll say, well, there's, there's different types of sin. You know, there's, there's knowing sin that you're doing, knowingly doing things, and then there's sins that you do out of ignorance and, and kind of, you know, little definitions of sin and things. It's all about works. They'll claim to have faith in Jesus, but then it's this, but I have to have holy living, and I have to live in obedience, and walk in obedience, and I have to, I have to do all these things, and at any time, if I get off that narrow path, I've lost it. You know? And yet, you can look at these guys, you can say, okay, what about pride? What about gluttony? What about envy? What about strife? Hello? <laughs> This guy here, masters in strife, right? I mean, don't even, you want, you want to see some vexation? Look at some of the stuff he does his open-air preaching. Filthy, horrible things. He shouldn't be anywhere even near some of this stuff. And these guys, it's funny. They're always drawn to places where you aren't going to find Bible-believing Christians. Kind of weird. I've seen this thing with these guys. They'll go to the beaches. They'll go to the bars. They'll go to the gay pride rallies, the sodomites and things. They'll go to all these places knowing that there are no Bible believers there, they can actually say, hey, wait a second, you're preaching works salvation. And if they do run into somebody that knows that, they'll argue with them and they'll get mad and whatever else. They're fake. They're fake. But, you know, it goes in there, this little dramatic thing here at the end. But I'm going to just show you an example of one of this little loser here, this Jesse Moore in hell. Um, and this guy says to him about John chapter 1, verse 8, and he changes the text. John chapter 1, verse 8. I'll show it to you here real quick. 1 John, excuse me, 1 John chapter 1, verse 8. If we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. All right? And he says, if we say that we have not sinned, that's past tense. Watch. Listen to this. Isn't that what you said? You remember? You know what you said? You have sinned? No, I'm not sinning. You don't sin? No, of course There's not. There's no sin within you. No, no, no. Can you read First John? One, can you read First John? Yeah, it says if you walk in the light, as He is no, in the light. No. The blood of Jesus Christ and Son cleanses us from all sin. First John 1:8. If we say that we have not sinned, we're a liar, and the truth is not in us. Uh oh. If we say that we have not sinned, He changed the Word of God. He changed it. That's what you no, it says, have not sinned. Past tense. And then it says, it says, if you say that you know him, but you do not keep his commandments, you're a liar and the truth is not in you. You don't keep God's commandments, so you don't know God. 
So there you have it. I'm just going to shut that one down. But yeah, right there. This liar just changed the word of God. And of course, you know, he's not a King James Bible believing Christian. They, they change the word of God whenever they feel like it. And, uh, you know, just, I made my video exposing him and, uh, and some of these other devils out there. You know, oh, you know, you have to walk in holiness and you have to this. You know, work salvation. That's all it is. You can claim that you have faith in Jesus Christ, but if you believe that you can lose your salvation at any time, you're not putting your faith in Jesus. Let me show you one more verse of scripture here before I quit, before I stop this video. And uh, this is really kind of a, this really puts the nail on the coffin for these idiots. Not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us. By the washing of regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. If you believe that you can lose your salvation, you might want to get God's salvation. If he saves you, then he keeps you saved. He will punish you. He will chasten you if you mess around in sin. And the, the chastening of the Lord can be quite severe at times. Absolutely. It isn't some kind of a free license to sin because God saved you and he's sealed you unto the day of redemption. But you live in a body of sin. You're a sinner. That's why you got saved. And if you can't agree with the Apostle Paul and say, I know that in me, that is in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. then you're not saved. Just as simple as that. You're trusting in your own self-righteousness like this lying devil right here. Be very careful about listening to somebody like this. He's turning people away from Jesus Christ and to their own self-righteousness.